Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Just want to praise you. Good morning. First, I'd like to thank God for allowing me to be here this morning. Second, I want to thank all the members of Shop Street who have walked with me and guided me over these years since I've been here with my wife, Elizabeth. That ends up being some 42 years. Second, next one, I'd like to thank all the members. Some have gone and some have, are still here who have encouraged me and walked with me and have guided me in my walk with you to be arriving at this age in my life. I want to thank you. I want to thank all my children. Only one is here today. My brothers in the South, but all of my children who are on Zoom, I want to thank you. For you have enabled me to be the person that I am. I just want to thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, come by here and wrap your arms around us. Guide and sustain us and enable us to understand what is important in life. Walk with each member of this congregation. Guide and sustain them. Enable them to continually to hold on and continually to pray for your assistance and your guidance and your support. Oh God, we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who is rich? Who is rich? You know, this selection from the Bible, from Luke, is very interesting for me. And it's very important. Because throughout life, I have had to call on God. I have had to walk with him. Have had to have him to walk with me. Because I was a frail person in this world. Who is rich? The rich man said to Abraham, then please send Lazarus to my brother's home. Let him warn them that they need to improve their ways. What he was saying is that he did not live well himself, and therefore he wanted them to have the benefit of not making the same mistakes. But he wanted them to come, someone come from, from the hell that he was in. And the reality of it all, God doesn't organize his life that way, to send someone from heaven to tell people how to live. It is interesting that even the rich man as he was in hell, realized he had made big mistakes. And so he wanted to warn his brothers not to make the same mistakes. My friends, life is not that way. God does not want someone from hell to come back and visit us and tell us how to live. He wants us to start the process as we go day by day. I remember something that was very interesting, that when I was in integrating the schools in DC, how I was treated as I walked to my post as a black boy in a white neighborhood. And one lady came out 
and saw how that was being treated. And she walked up to me and wrapped her arms around me and said, I want them to see them hugging me, you hugging you, saying that you are important. I want you to know that you talk to the Lord and he will bring you through all of this. Find something to hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no different today than it was then back in the 60s. It is no different. If you listen to what's happening on the news, and I'm not going to keep you long. If you look at what happens happening in the news, if you look at the information in regards to our former president, the rich man looking to be successful in this time when he has committed so many errors, yeah. help him to turn around and seek God. Seek Jesus. The other point I want to share, when my twins were born, I was at a church in Harvey, Illinois. And the twins were born. Twins came home on the 1st of May. And I was to be ordained in June as a as a deacon, so I could become an elder. But the rushing of bringing them home, caring for them in the evenings, because they stayed in the hospital a whole month. By the time it was almost conference time, my, my illness of ulcers crept in and sent me to the hospital. I went to one hospital up the street from me. And they took me in, looked at me and gave me some pills and sent me home and said, you'd be all right. When I got home, I got in bed, I got worse. I got up and said to my wife then, not this wife, to take me to the hospital in the next town. When I got to the hospital in the next town called Bluefield, the receptionist took me in and the doctor came out and he rushed over to me. He said, you don't look good. They tell me you don't look good. Come back here. <laughs> and then the next thing I knew they had this, this thing where I had to get on as they carried me back to the treatment room. He put me in the hospital. And as I was being admitted to my bedroom, the white nurse who was waiting on me was trying to do a procedure. And one of the things, I couldn't help it, but everything that I had had that day came up, went over her blonde hair, messed it up. <laughs> I felt so bad, I said, please forgive me, God. She left and left somewhere else. And they finished, they got that tube down in me. Mm. And when they got the tube down in me, I could feel it working. And I really said to the Lord, I really believe in God. One of the things that we need to do on a continuous basis, if you don't remember anything else from this sermon today, there's a song that tells it all. It is leaning on Jesus. If you don't do nothing else in life, learn how to lean on Jesus. For he will give you the strength Got a code on my and the courage to make it through. When the young lady came back and and she still had her blonde hair. She said to me, she said, Reverend, I pass your house every day. I see you sometime walking. When I saw you coming through the room, I knew who it was. I knew you were a man 
of the faith. And I wanted to make certain I gave you everything that you needed. Other people will see in you your relationship with God. You cannot hide that from them. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you this morning and ask you and beg you to pray to be leaning on Jesus Christ. For he will make everything you need to be successful. I was ordained that year because of the doctors got me well enough so that I could go to ordination. I stood there and how proud I was to know that leaning on Jesus had brought me through. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to lean on Jesus. Yeah. When I came to Shop Street, there were many United Methodist women's meetings. And one of the things I remember most by driving some of the women to the different meetings was to hear them talk about how they learned how to lean on Jesus. That has encouraged me continuously as I walk this world. You don't know what it means unless you experience leaning on Jesus. How he takes you up, pick you up, and enable you to walk through troubled times. He will enable you to bounce back from what most people give up. Today, I wanted just to preach about how Jesus has lifted me up, has brought me through a long time. When I was at the doctor's office on Friday, there was a lady who came into the doctor's office and she had this two babies in her hand. No one got up to help her, but as I was leaving, I said to her, are these twins? And she said to me, yes, they are twins. I was able to say to her, I said, yes, I have a set of twins. They are 52 now. This time you spend with them is the most precious time of their life. But the reality is they do grow up. And how blessed I am that they are 52. Amen. Oh, how blessed I am for they were able to grow and be successful. There's Carl, there's Christian, there's Brian, there's Trent, there's Lisa, and there are Jason, my children. All of them, each one of them, have lifted me up, encouraged me to be successful, encouraged me to reach out, but above everything, each one of them had taught me how to lean on Jesus. They have given me strength when other things were popping around, trying to engulf me as a person. I have been able to say, I'm leaning on Jesus and I'm walking with my head up high because I know who cares for me. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to lean on Jesus. All of your issues and problems will disappear. Learn how to lean on Jesus. Lazarus understood that when he went to the gate of the rich man. He knew that he would be taken care of by God. There was nothing in his mind 
about if and when God would take care of it. So it is important sometimes when we are at our worst for us to go and receive the things that a rich person has. But it doesn't mean you give up on leaning on Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, we as a black people have come thus far because we learned from our forefathers how to lean on Jesus. I want you to remember this sermon. If nothing else, remember our success has always been leaning, leaning on God, leaning on Jesus. He has walked with us through many paths, many ways that many people have given up. Ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a great experience to have God to wrap you around and wrap him in your arms and for you to wrap your arms around him, carry him. Make certain that everyone you come in contact know that you know Jesus. Let them know it by the way you carry yourself. Let them know by the way you speak. Let them know it by the way you shout and sing and praise his name. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the sermon. I want you to praise God. I want you to celebrate his, his, his being inside of you and let everyone you come in contact with know that you love God and you love Jesus. And it is because of that you are here today. Don't let anyone change your mind. Don't let anything get in its way. But constantly lean on Jesus. Call God into your life. That's the answer I pray today. Allow God and Jesus to save every one of us. We thank you. Amen.